Welcome to Alchemy Wizard. I'm Tom. All right, today I'm going to show you a bit about the laboratory experience, I guess, here is what you want to say. I mean, not everything is all glitz and fun. I mean, my polished videos, uh, yeah, they're a lot of polish. On, there's a lot of polish on those videos. So, today I got two things I want to accomplish. Number one, I want to start cooking more vanadium using the laser rig. That's right here. I have this plasma arc vanadium, which is pretty much uh, didn't last. And if you watched my last video on the on the on that experiment, so we're going to take what's left of this this stuff, and I'm going to mix it with the successful vanadium that we made in the uh, laser rig, which is only a small amount. And we're going to try to I'm going to try and convert that over the next few days to 500 milliliters of vanadium colloidal using the laser. That's going to take uh, days, like I said, because it's on, off, on, off. You can only run the lasers a certain amount of time. So, but while I'm doing that, and if I get that all set up, the next thing I'm working on in the meantime is we're going to work on colloidal iron. Now, colloidal iron, normally we I use stainless steel, which is a, an amalgam of uh, iron, chromium, and nickel, and carbon. And we use that. But some people might want to only have expressed interest in only having the iron and not the other stuff. So, we're going to learn how, I'm going to learn how to break down iron. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And, then the, and so that's going to be the second part of the process, is investigating what we need to break down the iron and make it make it into a colloidal. So the first thing we're going to start with is I got my vanadium chip here and we need to so wait. That gets that going and now I'm going to put the laser rig on top here. And this is the shield which we're going to turn. Okay, lasers are adjusted. Took me a few moments. Um, I don't know if you can see the laser beam shooting in here. I got the red glasses on. I can't see anything, but I'm going to turn the take these glasses off. So I'm going to turn this around in the back so that I don't have the green laser flashing in my eyes here. All right, so that's part one of what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to get the stuff together in order to uh, start show you what we're going to do with the iron experiment. This is a special top, or I call it for my coin top, so we can load the coins. In the top here, this is a brand new coin, I call it, piece of iron. That's the first thing we're going to do. Take this and weigh it in the four digit, four decimal place scale. Um, we'll see We'll see a lot of material off of this because unlike the laser process, a lot of material com comes off yeah, of doing I'm something like distilled this. Distilled water and I'm going to put 500, about, I have to see what I, about 550 milliliters of distilled water. And I'm going to activate this. Turn on the power supply. Now we need to measure current. Okay, I now have the rig properly set up. So I can monitor the current. I'm going to put this in here. Whoa, we need an anode. All right. So I'm going to use a carbon anode, which generally speaking, the carbon anode works pretty darn good for just about and I'm going to turn this on and see what kind of current I get I get 0.13 milliamps which is really really low well hap we're gonna to have to see what happens here with the current if the current slowly starts to creep upwards we might be okay but if it doesn't get anything over a milliamp then we're going to have to add some stuff. But we're not going to know that with, without some time. So I'm going to uh, let this cook just like this, probably for about 30 minutes, and then see where, where we stand with that. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes, and the current meter over here shows 18, 0 0.18, which has gone up about 30 microamps of current in 30 minutes. That's not encouraging at all. That means we're definitely going to need to uh, increase the uh, conductivity of the solution to try and break down the uh, iron. I've measured out 10 milliliters of sodium citrate, which is part of our goal formula. But I'm not going to dump the whole thing in. First, let's see what it takes to get this current up to 5 milliamps. 
I'm going to drip this stuff in here. I'm going to watch my current meter. Still climbing, but that's all right. We used um, two milliliters of fluid and of sodium citrate. We got 6.65 or 88 current going in there. I'm going to reset my second timer here, put this back. All right, well, several hours have actually gone by, and that's what happens with alchemy. You never know kind of what's going to happen. This is the solution. This, and it turned to this color, and then I took it and put it into the video microscope. And this is the waveform that I got in the video microscope. I'll show you up here, in the corner of the screen. It's a strange waveform. It um, reminds me of a of the gold waveform, in which. I don't know if we. I talk about this often. I am not sure that ruby red colloidal gold is an actual real colloidal. I think there's an ionic component to it. So, wondering if we got something going on here with the iron. So, I called my chemist, and my chemist said, Well, we could have iron 3 oxide in there or iron 3 hydroxide. So, she said, Put it through a uh, quantitative filter. That's what this is. This is a uh, funnel with a, you can't see it, but there's a there's a filter paper in here. Quantitative filter in paper in there and filter it. So what I did was took this, put it in here. Again, I'm going to have a video on filtering this stuff as soon as I can uh, nail down the specifics of it with how to do it. But anyway, this paper will will shred out oxides and hydroxides and only leave what everything else behind. The, the, if there's colloidals in there, it'll leave the colloidals behind and stuff like that. So it'll take out the big stuff. So I've done that, and uh, that's the that is the final picture that I got from it actually after filtering it, which is not much different than the original. There's really very little hydroxide or oxide in here, but here it's uncertain what we have. There might be colloidals here, there might not be colloidals. I'm going to have to do some more investigation on it, and I'm going to have to see, try maybe cook it in a different way, so that we don't get this sort of waveform that we got here, which is a mystery waveform. We don't actually know if I got colloidals in here or not. But that's just how things go with, you know, fig trying to figure out how this stuff works when it hasn't been done before. So I'm sure there's going to be a new part to this part as I investigate it some more. But I wanted to just let you guys go along with me and see what happens and we'll hope for the best. And well, we didn't really come up with any conclusions just yet on the whole thing. So I'm um, Tom, Alchemy Wizard. Thanks for uh, watching. If you've made it to the end of the video, Earn the cool. I'll talk to you again soon.